today's concept, today's topic is all about leveraging your resources, right? Efficiency. So Chris, to you, what does being efficient mean? Being efficient means being smart enough, being savvy enough, being responsible enough to recognize what things you're good at, what things you're not good at, and leveraging the things around you. And and just to kind of clarify, to leverage something, either you're going to put in less effort to get the same result, or you're going to put in, you're going to be able to put in, you know, even the same amount of effort and get greater results. So I'm either going to put in less effort to get the same results, or I'm going to put the same amount of effort and get greater results. Okay. And, and the reason that we're talking about this is because burnout is very real. And let me give it another example of efficiency in leveraging your resources. So yesterday, at the time of this recording, I uh, walked in on Chris doing a role play that sounds bad in itself. Like I walked in on Chris you know, role playing. <laughs> uh, I walked in on Chris doing a role play with somebody, a contractor, and they got to the point where the contractor and Chris was playing the, the quote unquote customer, the homeowner. And the contractor said, uh, I'm sorry, Chris said, Hey, I got to talk to my wife uh, about this stuff. Like that's a little bit too much money than we thought we were going to spend. Um, but let me talk to her. And the guy said, okay, well, what if we do this? Let me text you over some pictures of some of the projects that we can do and show them to her. Well, they were talking about like a $20,000 patio and the homeowner, Chris, in this scenario, he was playing somebody who only wanted to spend like, I guess way less. I don't even know if you gave him a number, but either way, let's think about the efficiency of that. So the process of, okay, well, let me text you over some pictures. Chris, in your opinion, when you walk in this scenario, when you walk over to your wife and say, Hey honey, this guy's $20,000. I know it's twice as much as we thought we were going to spend, but check out these photos that he texted me on this iPhone. How, how does that experience look? Well, there's no backstory. Uh, there's no emotion behind it. It's simply, you know, okay. Yeah. There's some pictures. There's no context behind it. So I don't really know how efficient that would be for me. Um, it, it just didn't seem well, how effective. I mean, if you're the homeowner, because then I'm going to go into the efficiency side from the contractor's perspective, but from the homeowner, would that close the deal with your wife? Well, no, I'm right now. I'm already in a position where we're have a potential to spend more money than we originally thought. And so now just seeing some pictures right now, it, it in, from my iPhone that someone sent over to me that I don't have any idea really who they are as a person and me sharing this with my wife, she's going to look at, Okay, so I see this, but yeah, I'm not spending twenty thousand dollars when our budget was ten. So it, it didn't it was not effective for that sale for me. Okay. Which if you think about it, this is probably pretty common. How effective do you think it is for anybody? I know you're doing a sales role play in this case, but in the real world, if a contractor said, I'm twice as much money as you want to spend, and it's because you're paying for quality and you're paying for the experience and all this and that. And then when they say, okay, we'll prove it. And you say, okay, great. Let me text you over a couple of pictures of some projects that we've done. How much does that back up the fact that, hey, this person is tw you know, worth twice as much? I don't see it. At all. I don't see it at all. At all. So let's think about it from the contractor's perspective. So first off, this is not efficient. I'm sorry, it's not effective. So it's already not gonna work. But let's think about it from the contractor's perspective, right? If they, this is a this is their own system, so now when the contractor gets off the phone, what they have to do is text them, or, you know, go through their phone and figure out which pictures to send over. So now they got to text them. Then they have to remember to follow back up. And then what's probably going to happen is they're going to follow back up. The person, the homeowner, you know, Chris in this situation, probably not going to answer because nobody wants to get sold to. And then they got to chase them. It's this whole song and dance. So it wastes your time as the contractor and it's also very ineffective for the homeowner because the medium it's not what you're building it's how you also present it right chris walk me through the difference you just went house hunting this past weekend walk me through the difference of when you walk into a home that is staged versus not staged and how do you feel when it comes to buying a home when i when i walk through uh, some of the first houses and you know it's i see a space i see a floor plan um, I kind of have an idea in my head of what I, what I want, but it's not a clear idea. 
It's just a, a v- pretty vague idea of what I want, maybe what I'm used to. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm going through these spaces and I don't know if you've ever done this, but like if you look at a room that's completely cleared out, I feel like that room looks a lot smaller. It's tiny, right? It looks so much smaller, right? But when I walked through a house that was staged, had a bed in it, had a you know a couch in it, um, you know, had the ability built the ability to see that kitchen and that living room area all in one space, that huge open floor plan with the TV there, with the pictures there. And I can see a family there. It set a mood for me. Right. I don't know if that's too like, you know, crazy to think about, but it set a mood for me. I felt like I can see myself in this situation. I can see myself in this space. When I saw a bed in a room, it wasn't just up to my imagination to try to, you know, put my own furniture in there. Right. I got to see examples of exactly what this could be for me. So when I looked through it, the houses that didn't have anything in them, I was like, okay, well maybe, but the house that, I mean, we didn't go for it with this house. So we actually got a new build um, and, and that was very much through the renderings and mm-hmm. things like that. We get to see exactly what we kind of expect for a house. We're thinking that if we're gonna, you know, stay here for some time or if we're gonna sell, a new build was the best thing for us. All right. But I still talk to Megan about this situation right now. Like that house that was staged, I'm like, I really wish we'd have got that house. Like, I'm not like regretting our new build situation, mm-hmm. but I felt enough emotion there because when I went outside, I saw chairs at the back patio. I saw the pergola. I've never wanted a pergola in my life. I have no idea what a pergola is even used for. Right. It's, it ha- like, it's legitimately, it's not even enclosed. You know, it doesn't block any rain, yeah. any elements. It's just there. It's just there, but I saw myself there. And I talked to Megan all the time, like, dang, we should have got a pergola. 